Well, hello, everybody. This is Paul Feuerstein, the editor-in-chief of Dentistry Today. And I always love hanging out with my friends, even if they're not next to me, you know, next to each other virtually. I'm here with Dr. Carlos Spirinelli Ramos. Carlos, how are you today? I'm very good. How are you, Paul? I'm pretty good. So Carlos is not only a DDS, he's an MS, he's a PhD, he's a world traveler. He does a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things around the area. And uh, I love I've loved bumping into you at the shows and, and learning a lot from you about endodontics and all sorts of things about the earth and the world and culture and it's just it's just he, he's just a great guy everybody. Uh, <laughs> so so we we had to talk a little bit about, about root canals and one of the things about root canals is as a practitioner we prepare the canals we go through these courses and we learn how to go and shape the canals and we do all these sorts of things and we. We go through the canals using different files and different systems. But as we're going through the canals, our files are round. And even if we're going laterally back and forth, this, the canals are not shaped around. They're sort of oval shaped. And there's even little ribbon areas that things are sticking out in the sides. And we have debris that comes into the canals. And so, of course, a, a key part of root canal is getting the debris out of the canal and cleansing the canal and getting to the areas that you missed. And so historically, it's been done with uh, with irrigants. And the challenge has always been, how do you get to the bottom of that canal? How do you get to the apex of that canal without shooting the stuff out through the base? And over the years, we've, we've seen different cannulas developed. Some of them are, have a straight line and there's a hole at the bottom. Some of them shoot it at the side. But I'm going to leave, pass the, bat, the baton over here to Carlos to take it from this point. So I've just shaped my canal. There's all sorts of stuff all over the place. And I have to go with irrigation. So give us a little bit of story about what's been there and what we're going to see and what you've actually invented. First of all, thanks for having me, Paul. Um, <laughs> besides we are friends, but it's always an honor and a pleasure to, to be in this space, sharing with you some uh, concepts, ideas, sharing with you some, some things about dentistry or not about dentistry. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. But yes, you are totally right. So the, the, the bottom line of this, of this uh, conversation is the fact that we had a, a huge development on the last, let's say 30 years, maybe maybe 30 years, 25 years on instrumentation, on uh, files, on motors. We previously, we are talking about one of my patents that is the reciprocation movement. And the reciprocation movement is the, one of the good examples of what we achieve in, pretty much uh, a short period of time. I remember when I started my endodontics uh, back in Brazil, 1990, uh, when I coming back from Japan, I started my residency at the University of Sao Paulo. And I remember that I took 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes just for instrumentation of a molar. At that time, uh, we had this uh, very few expectation of what was coming by the 90s and the 20s, that was the rotary files, the nitide files, the reciprocation files, the heat treated nitide files. So nowadays, if you see the, the, the percentage of breaking files during a procedure, of course, we have to take into account anatomy and everything. But uh, if you have a good motor, if you have good files, and if you are trained enough to uh, not to mix too much pressure during your instrumentation, you are going to do instrumentation of a molar in what? Five minutes, seven minutes, maybe less than that. So the, 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 the period that sodium hypochlorite in the past 30 years ago, 40 years ago, was uh, inside the, the root canal during your instrumentation, even a 1% sodium hypochlorite, uh, for 40 minutes stay a lot. So nowadays you have to uh, increase the time of sodium hypochlorite, even though your instrumentation is done. And pretty much nobody do that because it's kind of a waste of time. So yeah. that's the main reason that they start to increase the percentage concentration of sodium hypochlorite, 2%, then 5%, then 6%. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Buchanan is now with 8.5%, I guess. Wow. So it is it is too much, in my opinion. It is one, too one, dangerous. Yeah. So, so I'm sorry, uh, but one, one of the other factors is that we're trying to save tooth structures. So we're being much more conservative in this canals too. 
So exactly we, using, we don't want to go all the way up to a 90, you know? Exactly. Uh, and, 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 so, and the, so that's a problem too. It is like, just, just remember that when you are conservative, you are doing less instrumentation, meaning that you are leaving more debris than you was and, uh, yeah. So uh, I have one, one of the papers that I like very much is um, from Saulius Drukenis, that he's from Lithuania. And he did a comparison with ProTaper six files, then Bressler uh, five files, and Genius ProFlex three files. And he got the same result, meaning that 40% of the whole molar Denton Moss surface was not even touched. And we are not talking about just here and there, we are talking about all the three thirds cervical third, middle third, and apical third as well. So you have to give us a, a, a chance of irrigation. And by the way, we know now, we know after a lot of uh, developments on instrumentation, you remember very well Dr. Schilder saying cleaning and shaping the root canal system. That was the big motto of Dr. Schilder. That is one of the highlights of endodontics of the endodontics history i would say Absolutely. but that gave the sensation that when you are shaping you are cleaning and that's exactly the opposite when you are shaping you are making a lot of dirt inside the canal you are making debris and it it, it uh, in my courses i always talk with my students like or, or with the dentists the attendees that were there don't stay more than five seconds with your uh, rotary fire inside the canal. Don't do back and forth movements because you are packing and packing and packing debris. The those yeah. files, those files in one second, they cut a lot. In five seconds, they cut five times a lot, mm -hmm. meaning that it's very complicated to remove all this debris that you produce plus the canal content that is there. So that's why we are talking about irrigation more and more and more these days, because we know that of course it is very important that we develop a new instrumentation system with new instruments safer and faster that's cool that's okay time is money we save a lot of time with these instrumentation techniques but uh time is money and i agree i don't disagree i just need to highlight the importance of the patient is important as well we can we we have to have a good root canal treatment because you can lose all the money that you got in your root canal in a retreatment that you have to do without charging anything from the patient and, and the retreatment is always twice the time that you uh, do your root canal primarily well, so just, it's the old uh, adage if you don't do it right the first time you're not gonna have time to do it over again either the other thing and is you cannot that, charge anything because you've yeah. done and, and, and something got wrong, right? So yeah. every time, and I was having a discussion with a super duper, uh, very well known endodontist here in the United States, and I agree with him. He said, Carlos, is your IVAC will we speed up the process? I said, Well, we will not speed up the process. It's the same time that you are using your ultrasonic activation, it will be exactly the same with the IVAC, but you have less extrusion, you have uh, a, a better control of this liquid, but it's the same time. And he said, well, so why do you jump from one to the other? I said, well, just because safety. And uh, and it's, uh, I, I think that still a better cleaning on the apical third. And he said, still, don't you think that something that will shorten the time will be better? I said, well, this is another issue. Shortening the time, meaning that you have something that needs to be in a shorter time, but needs to be good enough not to have a, 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 a problem or a failure or something like that, that you need to retreat. He said, oh yes, now I agree with you. I said, yeah, okay. And, 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 and we, you know, we also were talking not only about debris, but we're talking about pulpal tissue that's sitting all over the place too. And, and, bacteria, and, and, and the key here is, so, I mean, you don't want to rush I mean, it's nice to be able to instrument very quickly and get all the canals clean out, right? But you, before you start the fill, you have to get all the biofilm out of there. You have to get everything out, out of there. Absolutely. Let's, absolutely. let's go backwards a little bit for a second. So historically, we used to use a little syringe, just a plain old syringe and squirt it down the canal and vacuum it out and see what we could do. And then the, there was an evolution of the way 
the irrigation was done with different processes, including you mentioned ultrasonics. So give a quick overview of the the old stuff. Well, I won't say the old stuff. The things I that are being not used. Really old. Yeah, I would yeah. not say that syringe and cannulas are old because the majority of GPs and the and I I would say the majority of endodontists is still use syringe and cannulas. What happens with syringe and cannulas is that we, we start with veterinary uh, needles. That, that was horrible, right? Yeah. And then we start to use smaller diameters uh, OD uh, cannulas like 31 gauge or 30 gauge or 29 gauge whatsoever. And then we start to change the tip of the cannula. And, exactly. and, and this is very important why we change the tip, right? So we change the tip because we know that if you go very close to the working length, you start to create a lot of positive pressure. And then yeah, the apex. Uh, yeah. you, you can have some extrusion. So nobody wants that. It's not only because the big accidents with sodium hypochlorite, the small accidents that we don't perceive or we don't, we don't see uh, the, 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 the inflammation there. But for sure, if you extrude little amounts of sodium hypochlorite, you are going to have a positive pain uh, more preeminent, let's put it in this way. So, so some of the, so what about the, what about the, the, the uh, syringes that they had, they closed off the tip and they yeah, had to come out the sides. So that's exactly, uh, that's exactly true. So to prevent extrusion, they open two lateral openings and, and close the, 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 the yeah. end opening It's called, um, lateral or, 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 uh, side port yeah. vent. Uh, needles and that's okay that's all right because then you can definitely and there's Christos Batsiukis is a Greek professor but he was in Ayakta in Holland for a long long time he is one of the best in terms of irrigation process and uh, he recently published a paper showing that yes when you do a side vented cannula you reduce exponentially the risk of extrusion but the fact is you don't do nothing in front of the cannula. So what is the point? You want to clean the apical part. You want to clean the apical third. Actually, it's the most important one. Is is sure. is where exactly you have contact by the foramen or through the foramen with the defense cells. So, so how did so, so how did you so how did you attack that area by with 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 the, well, let's explain the new system that you've been working with. Yeah. Uh, before explaining the new system, there's a, there's one system the preliminary of this one that's called Endovac that was based on oh, negative yes, pressure. Yes, 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 yes. And that in in Endovac was a very clever uh, and uh, option. Actually, not only clever. Studies shown that uh, the only system that went to the working length 100. percent And I, we were talking about Dr. Nestor Cuenca from uh, Washington State. He's in Seattle right now, and he has a very nice publication, 2010 Journal of Endodontics, showing this. And the conclusion of his paper was very, how can I say, uh, in inspirational? Is that a, a English word? I think that is right. <laughs> so it was very inspirational because um, uh, he says more studies needs to be done to evaluate the synergistic action of negative pressure in ultrasonics. So when I saw that back in the day, I said, oh my gosh, why we don't do that? It's just a, a matter of vibrate the little end of that cannula. Well, it is not. It's way, way, way more complicated than that. But I start to think about it back in 2010, I said, why we don't vibrate endovac and then we have this synergistic effect uh, a little comments about endovac as well endovac was a very hard setup uh, you have a lot of parts you know it, 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 i use endovac yeah. a lot back in brazil and uh, it, it was very difficult to set up my assistant always complaining about it so one of the things that i put in my mind needs to be simple set up uh, the second thing about endovac when the little holes was 12 holes, little ones, 0 0.10 millimeters diameter. That was very easy to clog. And unclogging the endovac, you have to unset everything, put some pressure and set again. So that is a waste of time. That I agree that was a waste of time. 
and I'm not talking about the price or cost because it depends. Back in Brazil was extremely expensive here in the US, depending of what is your income, right? Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about that, the, the, the IVAC, because that is something that start with this idea of let's do something simpler, simpler setup. Let's do something that will unclog easier and have some activation to do the synergistic effect that Nestor Cuenca was talking about in his paper. So we start to, I start to think about a polymer cannula. Uh, polymer cannulas are very interesting. Uh, we have some in the market, Vista has, Ultranet has, uh, but it's poly, uh, polypropylene, simple polypropylene. It's a polymer, it's a good one. Uh, but there's one problem. Polymers uh, like polypropylene, they don't vibrate uh, oh, very good. They're very well. soft. Yeah, they are too soft. So yeah. I start to uh, do some experimental uh, prototypes with peak polyether, ether ketone. And peak, it is exactly the opposite, vibrates like metal. So I said, why we don't do with peak? But peak has a problem, it's very hard to uh, to extrude peak is a very high temperature machine. The extrusion machine. Oh, you mean the, the manufacturing? You saw about the manufacturing. Manufacturing yeah. wise, it will be a nightmare to do it. Uh, you can see little tubes of peak that goes inside arteries. You can see some implants of peak, but a small tapered tubing. It's very complicated to do. I, we tried many, many times. And the engineers hate me because he says, Carlos, you, you're coming with an idea that will be impossible to do. It is not impossible, though, but it's so expensive that it's way more expensive than a metal one. So what I try to do is we back and forth with engineers, chemical engineers, very good polymer guys. They, they are the polymer big heads in the whole world. And we came with a solution that is a special polypropylene uh, that is enriched with peak. So you, 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 you can come with something that is kind of a mixed Hybrid. peak with yeah. poly, uh, poly, um, polypropylene. That's interesting. Uh, it is not very super difficult to do, uh, but we have a proprietary um, that is in the patent. Yeah, there, the must be, there, is, there must be a percentage in the manufacturing uh, process to make the is, product. It is a percentage, but it's more than that. There's temperature involved. There's um, uh, pressure involved, so it's not take some peak, take some properly, and then okay, put together. Okay. No, <laughs> but yes, but yes, it is doable. So we came with this cannula that is a a, a polymer cannula that, according to Dr. Giulio Gavini in Politecnica University of São Paulo study, it vibrates 29.2 kilohertz. So they they did a laser Doppler vibrometry. And they came with the, the vibration of the polymer, IVAC polymer tip that is 29.2 kilohertz. And guess what? Eerie safe from Action, that is a stainless steel, 29.2 as well. Another of my uh, development is the Nitai Sonic tip, that is a tip just for vibration uh, made of Nitai. That tip has a 31.2 kilohertz vibration, vibrates a little bit more. But the advantage of using the polymer is the fact that you don't break the polymer, right? So stainless steel vibrating inside the canal can break, oh. and I broke a lot of them. It's not super difficult to remove as a, a broken file, but it's still a pain in the ass to, to remove it. <laughs> I'm sorry, my... That's okay. That's, I think that's that we okay. have to cut this part. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, but it's still very difficult to remove. Uh, and and the night eye as well. The night eye breaks more than the stainless steel under vibration. And I was a little bit frustrated uh, with that invention because it, it it was a very flexible tip, but still breaking a lot. So a polymer tip, though, it is flexible, vibrates as metal, and is a cannula, is not a tip. So you have vibration, but you have suction at the very same time. Uh -huh. so, Basically, this is the, the, the first step, the first idea. But after the idea, and, and this is very important to everybody to know, because 
there are still people thinking, well, I have an idea, just woke up in the middle of the night like me, actually, and then start to draw something in a piece of paper. Yes, this is very important, and, 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 and maybe, maybe not, this will be a product. I will say that the chances, and I remember Dr. Rich Tuttle back in Notre Dame, when I, when I start to share with him my ideas and my patterns and et cetera, he said, Carlos, 99% of the good ideas that came to my office, came to my desk, just 1% or less than that are products nowadays. And I learned in a very hard way in 10 years working uh, with uh, inventions, let's put it in, the way, in this way, that when you have an idea, you have to think about simplicity, you have, a, you have to think about manufacturing, you have to think about uh, studies that will be done with your idea, you have to think about marketing, and you have to think about, of course, is this a good idea for now? right because you can have a good idea but if it is not in the timeline of development of of endodontics for example if you come with a very good idea about a very good instrument today nobody will care about it so but if you have a good look, idea coming about irrigation yes because everybody's looking for that so so how flexible are these little these uh, peak slash uh acrylic cannulas i mean can, can they go around curves can they do all these other they things? are they they are super flexible they are more flexible than a heat treated night tie file um wow. yes they are super flexible the, the, it is interesting because even though and just imagine like this if it is a solid chip mm -hmm. then i would say that will be not super flexible but it's a cannula it's a tube so it's right? hollow it's yeah. hollow so that's why it's super flexible. But you can ask me, Carlos, is not a problem if you bend or if you do yeah, uh, the like Because the, the fluid can't get through the cannula. Exactly. Like a hose. So that was one of my challenges. And believe me, if you do just with peak, then we will have this problem. So polypropylene mixed with peak gives the right flexibility without bending the tip like you know, like a, like a straw when you bend so, a straw so, and you make I'm that. I'm going to give you a uh, tough question. If, it probably would never happen, but if one of these cannulas broke in the canal, it shouldn't be that difficult to get out because it's a hollow cannula and it's plastic. It's super easy to, to, to remove it. You, 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 even with normal suction, you are going to remove it. Um, but they don't break, but they melt. They melt. So if you use without irrigation and outside the canal, and oh, by the dry yeah, yeah. test and you put number seven uh, 70 percent of the power of your uh of your piezo you can see that the tips start to melt and that caught my attention and i said what's going on why why just the tip then i call who the president of american association of ultrasonics that is a guy <laughs> from utah and uh, you know people from utah they are so nice and polite they are always always they they even these uh 800 calls they they pick up the phone and said hello right <laughs> in a very nice way so i said well my name is carlos na, na, na. and he said well pleased to meet you and then we start to talk and he said carlos send to me some samples and i will do some videos and i will get back for you explanation of this the tip is where you have the biggest amplitude of vibration and vibration means energy and energy means if you are in a solid state you increase the temperature uh -huh. so he said well if you want to increase the temperature of sodium hypochlorite inside the canal use this tip and i said man this is another thing that i can do with my ivac to increase temperature of sodium hypochlorite and is a catalyzation of the chemical reaction he yeah. said yes but I tested, and the increase of temperature is not significant. It's, it's just well, a, in the, yeah, and the wet canal, it's not going to change that that dramatically. Yeah, what, yeah, exactly. yeah. But anyways, but yeah. but that is the reason that you have melting tip, but not broken tip. I, I'm using the IVAC in a clinical situation as well. I'm using uh, bench testers. Um, I developed the thing, right? So. Uh, we never broke anything, and you can try. You are going to do everything that you want. I, I never saw bre breaking as a file. 
but mountain yeah. the tip uh, outside the canal yeah, yes which is not the use so so the the I, I i mean i sat down with you we saw the whole system it's a very simple physical system too it's not a lot of hardware at all it's yes so oh, the setup the setup is very simple as you can see here i have one in my hand so huh? this setup this is very simple I, I i will tell you what if you are using pui passive ultrasonic irrigation that is the majority of endodontists that is not using that is not using syringe and cannula, they use ultrasonic for activation, and it's right. called passive ultrasonic irrigation (PUI). There is very little that use CUI, that is constant or concomitant ultrasonic irrigation. But if you are using PUI, you are going to love this because it's the same connector that you have to put a connector for your PUI. You have to put a tip for PUI. There are some PUIs that the tip and the connection is one piece. That's okay. That's fine. So it's the same with the IVAC. You put this connector in your hand piece. You put the IVAC it's self threading. So you don't need any wrench, anything is just thread in the connection, the connector. Yeah. And then you have the setup. The setup is a short tubing. These two rings just to make the short tubing stable in your hands, just like that. You connect the tubing for uh, to the back part of your uh, annulus, tip, like this, and that's it. So the other part will be connected with a tubing that is connected with your regular uh, vacuum. Can be the high vac. I prefer to use my saliva ejector that is the low vac, and the reason is doesn't matter the pressure that you have in your low or high. The pressure here will be always the same by the diameter of the tip so it is a very easy setup there is nothing but you have to have a piezoelectric unit sure sure that is that but is you, but you already have that anyway so so you just it's a little it's a little add-on clip basically clips on and, and you're ready yeah. to go and very there's simple. two ways of using this right so i prefer to use there's also a ivec piezo unit uh provided by pecton uh, that is that is a very interesting one because you have bottles. So instead of only a reservoir, you have three bottles. Uh, in one bottle for sodium hypochlorite, another bottle for uh, EDTA, another bottle for uh, water. Actually, I designed that. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I need to be honest. So these bottles are uh, a special plastic as well that is not... Corroded. I did a, a test. I left six months sodium hypochlorite inside the bottle and nothing happens. But you cannot leave the bottle connected with your ultrasonic unit. Okay. Why? Because, you know, sodium hypochlorite will corrode everything. So you can use the bottle with sodium hypochlorite and with EDTA and finalize with distilled water for two reasons. One, you are going to wash the canal and leave the canal without any contamination of irrigants. And you're also to, flushing the system. <laughs> exactly, flushing the system. And with this IVAC unit that I, I helped to design with other engineers, of course, um, what happens is you have a semi-automatic flushing system. So you put a bottle of uh, distilled water, press two buttons, and press the paddle. Then automatically we'll flush the system for 40 seconds. I see, I see. This, so is, you this know... is a kind of protection as well. I think that so the key, the key here, I believe, is, is people have to go look at this article because we're going to have this. We'll have this video near the article. It's online. It's also in the print in the uh, in our November December issue of, the, of Dentistry Today. So um, it, it, it's the, I think we need some visuals here too to make to make some sense of it. But you, I know that that uh, Pac Dent shows shows at some of the dental shows. Uh, there's a website too. It's Pac. Now it's, you have to be careful. It's Pac dash dent.com and you can see all these, these, these videos there's pictures of the product there's probably pictures of you too <laughs> maybe i don't think so i, I, I think that uh, people will not buy anything that they see, they see my picture <laughs> but anyways so you know. so uh, uh i think you know i don't want to keep going on this because there's a lot so much information here and, and you're so you're so you're so passionate this is what enthusiastic I love yes yeah. yes i am um <laughs> I, I was talking with my therapist and he oh, says no. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I have to do it because it's, it's, just, it's too much energy. And with Zoom, you, you can pick up a therapist in Brazil that is 10% of the cost of a therapist here. Oh, that's good. But, but yeah. you have to speak Portuguese though, right? Oh, you have to, yes. Oh, there's, there's many people nowadays speaking English uh, or, or even Spanish, if you wish. But I was talking with him and, uh, and he's a very nice guy. He's a... A very nice guy. And he says, Carlos, every time that you talk about dentistry, it's kind of another Carlos that I see in front of me. It's kind of a, your, even your English is better. Everything just flow like, like crazy. You have to be careful because people, some people would think that you are trying to peacock yourself or show yourself <laughs> or something like that. I said, no, 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 no. That, I don't need that. Uh, honestly, called, I don't need that. But passion. I, passion. I, it That's is so passion funny. because when when I start this project, uh, Paul, I need to be honest with you. I, I, I was not so confident like I am right now because it was an idea. I had the prototypes and I start to send prototypes. And this this is very important for people to know. Uh, we are launching this product, but this product is done I would say a year and a half. We and and this is this is very important to say because Pacden and Pacden owner, he is very 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 careful about launching products without any any statement, without any let's say testimonial or without any sign of science behind it. And this is very important because as you know, as you said, I have a PhD in endodontics. I have a uh, 24 years history of uh, being a professor at university. Um, I did a lot of research as well. I published three books. I'm 18 chapters of books. So I, I I am very careful about coming with something without any evidence-based background. And we do have five studies finished, not published. Because publications is not yeah. under us, right? Uh, publications on Journal of Endodontics, International Endodontic Journal, all this takes you time. Know, it's per review and takes time. So, uh, but we, I know the results. I already know the results. So they were very kind with me. They said, well, you are an inventor. You deserve to know that your device is having good results. And by the way, I saw the results and then I started to say, wow, now, now I am more excited. And talking with Dr. Carr, talking with Dr. Cuenca, talking with Dr. White, and, um, and a, a lot of people, Dr. Renato Silva, a, a bunch of them, uh, I know these people, Ronald Zapata Ordinola, all these guys, they are very strict science-based, you know, view. They don't play around they don't say things without some kind of a some sort of a, a evidence and all them saying i think that you have to be enthusiastic with this idea because it's the only idea that join together vibration activation plus negative pressure plus concomitant irrigation so that's that's the reason that i am excited and by the way those girls there, my my wife and my daughter, they are always excited with me. They are not <laughs> dentists, but they are always saying, "Oh, Dad, that is okay. That's fine. Let's let's go." Even Carlos. the paper, even the paper that you have that we are going to publish now, yeah. uh, even the paper. This paper was written a year ago. I remember it was after uh, Thanksgiving last year. I started to write this paper. I. Um, Pretty much everything was done, and you remember that I sent yeah. to you to your appreciation. But, but we want to be we want to be positive with the valid, <coughs> with, the, with the, the validation, and and you know, and, and like like you just said, it came out, and you don't have to think about it. it. You know, it's all there, and everything works the way it's supposed to work. You've yep. eaten this thing up, you've broken it, you've done everything you possibly could do to ruin it, and you can't even ruin it. So that's <laughs> another thing that is important to say, Paul. When we were talking about this, is the safety of the system. So, oh, yeah. yes, of course, we are not going to break this thing inside the canal. And even if we break, we can remove. But let's talk about extrusion, because this is very important. It's the only system that uses negative pressure with uh, activation. And if you see other systems, I'm not 
talking bad about other systems. I don't need that, right? But if you see the other systems, they fulfill two or one of the principles, uh, the three principles of irrigation. And the three principles of irrigation that is evidence-based proof that is important on any irrigation method is activation, is going to the working length, going to the working length without extrusion, of course, and replacement of the liquid all the time to use a new liquid. So if you see the other systems, I'm not nominated any other system, but if you see them, sometimes you have one of the principles, sometimes you have two, but you never have the three. This is great. Carlos, this has just been really educational. I mean, uh, we went a long time, but if some, if I hope somebody's still with, people are still with us at this point, there's a wealth of knowledge that we just gave out. And, and it's, it's, it just makes sense. And the fact that it does work and it's going to solve a lot of issues and, and it's in the marketplace now with Pactent, the, the IVAC system. I, I can't thank you enough for this. So, I mean. <laughs> well, well, thank you a lot for having me here. I, 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 you know my story with dentistry today. I think that this is the most probably the seventh or uh, paper that I publish. I love to publish in dentistry today. It's a, uh, it's a, a straight line to the real dentist, to the day-to-day -day dentist that needs uh, the, the, this kind of uh, information. Um, I love to work with you guys. The whole team is awesome. They always uh, treat me so well, so respectfully. And, uh, and I I'm just uh, want to say thank you very much for this opportunity. And, uh, and yes, I think that we have to spread the news. I think that we have to talk more about it because this is the new challenge. Uh, one of my lectures about this, just to finalize, the name is, um, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the new era Aquarius. Um, yeah. it, 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 so my lecture was kind of a irrigation on the era of Aquarius or something like that. So it, it is very important uh, us to talk about it, to, to discuss irrigation. As I said in the very beginning, instrumentation was the main thing for 30 years let's change a little bit the subject and uh, let's start this new era of irrigation with uh, some solutions and i think that ivac will be a very important um development let's put it this way that will help to not to speed up the process maybe, but to get better results or safety results without extrusion. That's the best. Carlos, again, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you with, uh, some, wherever I find you, I'll, I'll, I'll look for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, best. yeah. All right, great, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you guys.